Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome back to another Starfield Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to navigate and utilize layers. Let's dive into it. So before we jump in, what are layers? Well, layers are something that were introduced back in the Fallout 4 Creation Kit and have also made their way to the Starfield Creation Kit. They have a few more advancements over their Fallout 4 counterpart and essentially they allow you to group a collection of references in the render window into their own groupings so that you can do things like show and hide collection of objects, you can freeze them in place, you can accidentally delete things. Uh, you can do things like highlight a collection of objects very easily in a group so you can see different things that you're manipulating and it just makes the whole world design process far far easier to deal with. So let's jump in and see how they work. For the purpose of this video I've gone ahead and loaded the gold bank in Akala City and as you can see working with this cell would be absolutely manic because of the amount of items that we've got in there, the markers, the triggers. We could hide some of this stuff, we could hide and show markers, uh, but it's just still going to make it really difficult to edit different areas of this cell without moving the wrong thing, deleting the wrong thing, and, and also if you wanted to, to overlap things. So let's say that you wanted a particular room to be one of two rooms, it was a player home that you could swap out, and you wanted it to be either a kitchen or a bathroom. How are you going to design both those rooms in the same room without having items overlap and cause absolute havoc. Well, that's where layers come in. So on the left hand side here, if we just zoom in, you can see that we have a layers window. If you don't see this, you can click on view and then layers and that will allow you to bring this window up. And from here, this allows you to group objects, as I said at the start of the video, so that we can start pairing things together. You can hide and show them. Uh, you can freeze them so they can't be touched and edited or accidentally deleted. And you can choose what the active layer is. Uh, you can do a number of different things here and even set a highlighting color, which I'll, I'll show you in detail in a moment. So layers are the answer to allow us to do a lot of that stuff. And just to show you very quickly, uh, how this works, uh, you'll see some objects start to disappear on the right in the render window as we change the visibility here. So you can see all the lights have gone out because I've hidden the lighting layer and if I just turn that back on and start hiding other layers you'll see the items start to disappear. Quite cool. Okay, so it's time to go ahead and create our very first layer. But before I do that, if we just go to the top left here and zoom in, you can see that we have got a default layer. Now that is exactly as it says on the tin. Uh, when you load up a cell for the first time, create a cell, a cell that doesn't really have any other layers, it will have a default layer that every single item sits on. And if you want, you can completely keep it that way. Uh, but everything has a default layer. Now to create a new layer, all we've got to do is click on new layer, give this a name, so I'm going to call it rugs, click OK, and then as you can see we've got a new layer created at the bottom here. It says that its colour is white by default, it has zero objects in it, its visibility is on, and then we've got the, the other options I'll cover in a moment. So if I want to add items to this layer, the first thing that I need to do is I need to make it the active layer. That means that if I drag and drop anything from the object window into the render window, or I right click and add select to layer, as I'm going to do in a second, they will go on to whatever the active layer is. So to make it the active layer, simply click right next to the A column next to your layer, and it will put the little A symbol next to it. And now you'll know that that's the active layer. So anything that we do here in terms of manipulating objects, like I say, putting them into the render window, adding them to layers, they're going to add to that layer. So I'm going to click on a rug piece here. I'm going to hold down control to select multiple and I'm going to keep clicking on my rug pieces. And then I'm going to add this entire rug to a layer. So now that I've got that selected, I've got two ways that I can do this. I can just do the add selection to layer or I can just right click hover over layers and then click on add selection to active layer. Now what you may get is if you are selecting objects that are already part of another layer, it will warn you that they're going to be removed from the other layer. Objects can only be in one layer at a time, I believe. So you can click on yes to this, don't worry, it won't break anything. It will just shift them into the new layer. 
And as you can see at the top left now, we've got eight objects under our rugs layer and we can actually go ahead and change the visibility. So we can hide them and we can show them. And another thing you can do is do what is called freezing a layer. So if I click under that column for F, it shows a little F symbol again. And now when I go into the render window, I can't actually select those rugs. So if you're worried about clicking on uh, some sensitive objects in the render window, add them to a layer, freeze the layer, and you won't be able to accidentally click on them or delete them or anything like that. Very, very useful feature freezing layers. So I'm just gonna unfreeze that for now. Uh, LOD, I'm not covering that in this video, uh, but another useful option that we've got here is the C column, which is for color. Now, if you just click on there, you'll get this nice little color wheel. Uh, you can state whatever you want here in terms of colors. You've got the free full range of colors, which is excellent. And essentially what this does is I can set a color to this. So I'm just gonna do blue, click okay. And now if I was to click on overlay color, and move this slider, you'll see that everything in the object window starts to get painted the designated color, which will allow you to easily recognize different objects and what layer they are sitting under, which is really useful. So anything highlighted uh, blue is gonna be a rug. I could change that color if I wanted it to be a little clearer than that, so let's make it red. You'll see that uh, these all highlight red. And I could even do things like change the interior clutter to let's maybe say pink and now you can see all the interior clutter uh, is highlighted up pink or we can go ahead and turn that off quite handy a few final minor mentions for layers as well is that you can click on the filter option here and you can actually do a search hit enter and it will just show you specific layers when you start working with things like massive world spaces or just generally large or complex interiors you're going to get quite the list of layers and it's going to become quite difficult to see them so that filter is going to be really useful you can just clear that and hit enter if you then want to see all of your layers again and you can also do an expand all and a collapse all. Now when I expand all, you'll actually see what you can do is get layers within layers. And the way that you do this is you can right click on a layer and you've got an awful lot of control over here in terms of doing a number of batch actions. And you've got set parent layer and create child layer. So you can have the, the parent layer and then anything nestled under it can be a child layer. And you'll click those options and essentially uh, you'll get this box show up. You can filter down to the, the layers for your specific cell, search for them, click on them, and then you can start to, to really customize this. So like I say, you get layers in layers. So under lighting, you might want to have different types of lighting, like floor lighting or wall lighting or ceiling lighting. And there could be a layer for each of those under lighting. And then you can get really, really wild with the way that you control your layers here. So really, really handy stuff. And that is just about it for another Starfield Creation Kit tutorial video. So I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section below as always, especially if there's anything that I may have missed or something that you've got that you'd like to add. And also if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future, make sure you hit that like, subscribe and bell notification as not to miss future videos. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the Starfield.